Good evening everyone, time for another member update. So you can probably tell from my voice that I've been sick. Uh, that's kind of an understatement. This thing, whatever this bug was, it kind of knocks you out and you wake up like three or four days later and wonder where you've been. Uh, just run a temperature of 102 for days on end. So crazy, crazy bug. I think Jennifer's coming down with it now. So I apologize for not getting any videos out. I literally could not get out of bed for days on end. So this is the silver chart. And you can see here that it's kind of doing the beginning of the year pattern. I mean, that's not a super consistent pattern. It's one that we had last year. And it's one that we've had in previous years, sort of. Here's one from 2010 and here's a good one from 2009 where it started its run up at the beginning of the new year and ran um, for this big one here in 2010 it ran all the way up to that $50 price we're also seeing a rally in Bitcoin now it was very hard to predict where that bottom was going to come in I think it may be in now you can see here on the Huobi chart that we got a low of 49.02. The equivalent on the Bitfinex chart was 735. I was calling for a $600 price, roughly a 50% correction. We came very close to that. So it could be that uh, the correction is over, but if we go back and look historically, it could take a lot longer for the whole thing to work out. You can see here that after we corrected from this high that we got in June of uh, last year, it took a good one, two, three, four months before the downtrend even stopped and we got a resumed uptrend. Nevertheless, even though it took that much time to resume its uptrend, it never really did penetrate this low right here, which was about 550. So it's, it's quite possible that this 735 or so is going to be the low for the move. If that's the case, then we could have some serious upside if we get, you know, a blast off. And that would fake a lot of people out because I think a lot of people had assumed that since we failed, we no, we didn't. If you listen to my interview with Daniel uh, Vision Victory, I pointed out that Bitcoin made new highs in Chinese yuan. You can see clearly on this chart from Huobi, but it actually crashed before it could put in those new highs through arbitrage on the American exchanges. You can see it's so close you can barely call it. So the time that the Chinese government acted to prevent the rise in Bitcoin actually coincided with Bitcoin getting a new high in the Chinese currency and not being able to be arbed into the other currencies to get a new high in the other currencies. Now it's very interesting because think about that. How do you arb Bitcoin in a currency. Well, you buy the one currency and sell the other and buy Bitcoin and sell Bitcoin and obviously Bitcoin becomes a method of arbitraging the two currencies. Makes sense? Makes perfect sense as to why the Chinese government does not want the value of their currency to be arbitraged via cryptocurrencies. I don't think ultimately the United States is going to want that either. I, really don't think they have any choice though. So let me remind you of, this is a story that was 2008 during the last financial crisis and I'm showing you this bill because it's going to be hilarious when we look at the stunt that's being pulled in Venezuela now. This is the 100 trillion dollars Zimbabwe note. Now think about that number. 100 trillion Zimbabwe dollars if we were talking about U.S. dollars, then obviously a $100 trillion note, uh, you could pay off the national debt with that note and have $0.80 cents left over, so to speak. Uh, $20 trillion and $80 trillion in change. So that's how crazy it can be what governments can do when they're given unlimited powers of the printing press. They're absolutely insane off the rails and there's really nothing to, to get them back on the rails except the complete collapse of their country and their currency and in the case of Venezuela I certainly hope the the ending of the reign of this Maduro madman 
But uh, let's read a little bit of this, and then I'm going to point out some things about the note itself, which is kind of fascinating here. This is a zero hedge. This is what Venezuela's new vertical bank notes, now with added zeros, look like. We've all been eagerly waiting to see them. Venezuela's crisp, brand new, yet soon to be hyperinflated with many more zeros banknotes. And finally, after various failed attempts to deliver the new bills to Caracas, which according to Maduro were at least partially aborted due to pesky CIA meddling, they have arrived and they are vertical. The new banknote of 500 bolivars held outside a bank in Caracas, January 16th, and then below it here is a 5,000 bolivar note. You know, so they put put the woman there. I, the one up above can't really tell if it's a man or a woman, but they put a woman on the 5,000 bolivar note. A new banknote of 5,000 bolivars outside a bank in Caracas, January 16th. Eager to get their hands on the new currency, AP writes that Venezuelans stood in long ATM lines Monday to take out new larger denominated bills, quote, that President Nicolas Maduro hopes will help stabilize the crisis-wracked economy. Of course, they will do no such thing, as the pieces of paper in circulation have absolutely no bearing on the underlying economy or its hyperinflation but it will take at least several more shipments of new banknotes before the Maduro figures this out. As a reminder, in taking a page out of the Indian demonetization playbook, Maduro last month said he was scrapping circulation of the most used bill, the 100 Bolivar note, and replacing it with new bills ranging from 500 to 20,000 Bolivars. Locals were appalled. Residents in Caracas expressed shock at seeing bills with so many zeros a sign of how worthless the Bolivar had become amid triple-digit inflation and a collapse in foreign exchange reserves that has led to severe food shortages. Our advice, get used to it. The fun is only just starting, asks Zimbabwe. Quote, I never thought I'd have such a big bill in my hands, Malena Molina, a 35-year-old sales clerk, said as she inspected a crisp new 500 Bolivar notes she had just withdrawn. But with the inflation we're suffering, the notes we had weren't worth anything and you always had to go around with huge packages of bills. The Weimar Republic agrees. Monday's rollout of the first batch of imported notes came weeks later than the government had originally promised. Maduro last month ordered the 100 Bolivar note to be withdrawn from use well before the replacement bills were ready, leading to widespread chaos as Venezuelans rushed to spend the bills before they were taken out of circulation. With cash running out, looting and protests were widespread, although they were widespread before the currency exchange too, so there wasn't much of a difference, and Maduro had to backtrack. On Sunday, he extended for the third time until February 20th the deadline for the 100 Bolivar note to remain legal tender. While the new denominations should make cash transactions easier, the relief may be short-lived since the largest note, the 20,000 Bolivar note, is now worth less than $6 on the widely used black market. Maduro already has to order a fresh batch with at least one more zero. With inflation forecast by the International Monetary Fund to hit four digits this year, few economists expect the currency to rebound anytime soon. Seeking to combat the black market, the government on Monday inaugurated four currency exchange houses near the border with Colombia, where Venezuelans will be able to purchase Colombian pesos at a favorable exchange rate of four pesos per bolivar. The bolivar currently is worth just a quarter of that amount at exchange houses over the border in Colombia. And while on the surface this risk-free arbitrage guaranteeing 400% returns would be a slam dunk trade, there are two problems. First, well, Governor Jose Valima Mora of Takira State said the Venezuelan Central Bank has at its disposal a large amount of pesos to meet what is expected to be strong demand for hard currency. Purchases would be capped between $200 and $300. A second and bigger probability is that it was hard to find anyone on Monday who managed to buy pesos. Opponents of Maduro said in trying to set an exchange rate for pesos, authorities are paving way for corruption, saying only certain individuals and companies close to the government will be able to purchase them at the official rate. They are, of course, right. You think? Of course. We know. So, interesting here. Let's look at this note. Here is the 500 note. Now, if you remember, they said that... um, I don't have this so I can rotate it, but... um, 
they said that the 20,000 was the largest note and that was worth six dollars so this other one was the 5,000 and that's going to be worth uh, one quarter of that and that means that this 5,000 Boulevard note is going to be worth a dollar fifty so the 500 Boulevard note is only worth 15 cents so they're already getting near the point of having to add more zeros but I think what's fascinating here look at the watermark on this what is fascinating about this new note is if you look here where the 5,000 is printed on this note you've got the watermark here showing three more zeros at the bottom even four you see that one two three four five zeros there and a zero 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 there almost as if they are already admitting that this note, whoever purchases this note with whatever wealth they have, whether that's uh, taking your hard-earned crops and exchanging them for this worthless currency, or your labor and exchanging it for this worthless currency, it's pretty much being told to you ahead of time that whatever you trade for this, you're only gonna get about a thousandth of the value because this is going to be devalued by a thousand to one when these three zeros here are added right there zero 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 unbelievable uh, these corrupt governments that their people let them get away with this that Nicolas Maduro has not been hanged in a public square and everyone associated with him publicly flogged and then tarred and feathered and run out of the country on a rail it absolutely boggles my mind that these people are allowed to get away with this. It, it must be because the people are so ignorant about how money and economies work. Of course, that's typical in a country that has been socialist for this long. This country has been plagued by socialism ever since Chavez came to power and everybody thought they were voting themselves a free lunch. So absolutely staggering information. We know that barring any drastic change, we know that the Chinese have done some bailing out of Venezuela. I, I have no idea why they would do that, except to just maybe give themselves a strategic hold somewhere in South America, because this is a sinking ship. It doesn't matter how much money you pour into it, it's going down, just like Zimbabwe and ultimately the currency will be completely worthless doesn't matter how many zeros they put on the end of it and somebody else's currency that actually has value will be traded within the country now unfortunately we don't hear much about bitcoin being used there uh, it's sad because you can see from the price of bitcoin that uh, it's pretty much an opposite to what's happened to the price of the venezuelan uh, Bolivar on the black market. So anybody who had taken their Bolivars and committed, uh, converted them to Bitcoin, even if they had converted their Bolivars to Bitcoin right there, 88.95 yuan or uh, in dollars, let's say they converted their Bolivar to Bitcoin at 11.66 and they'd taken this loss. That is nothing compared to the loss that they've taken and that they're hitting out having them take another 1,000 fold loss. In other words, they're already hinting that people buying into these notes are very soon going to take a 99.9% .9 loss. And we'll talk to you next time.